me get down here where I can uh, get in a picture. I want to get a good zero in on this. This is done. It's a WEN 4x6 metal bandsaw, same one that you get at Harbor Freight, WEN, um, I think Eastwood has one. I mean, they're, they're, everybody has them, and there's probably millions of them. And it's been a really good saw within its size range. But here's all the mods I made. Like, the first thing I did is I made the handle for the jack, for the, for the clamp, longer. I couldn't stand it underneath here with my fat fingers, you know. And you can see I put a flood coolant system. And to be honest, I was inspired by Steve Summers. I really love his videos. I watch them all the time. I don't know, quite a few years ago, I sent him some reams or something. He sent me a sticker. Nice guy. And I had been planning on doing something like this. In fact, I built this for this exact reason, like I, when I first started messing with a TIG machine. Anyway, this genius little concept that he had of mounting a copper, a quarter inch copper pipe with a slit right over the blade, it just inspired me. So to Steve, thanks, you inspired me with that, and I went ahead and finished it. I did a little different, though. For example, I divorced all the wiring from this off switch here that would control turning it off when it came down. And I put in a, I bought a 25 foot, 14 gauge extension cord, used it to bring power into this box. This outlet is hot all the time that the cord is plugged in. And this switch works all the time the cord is plugged in. But the, the bandsaw won't run because I've got a little micro switch on the back. I'll uh, put a picture of it. It's the only thing you can't see from here. And I built this tank, 8 inch by 8 inch by 12 inch square. There's a panel in the center like to, to divide it. And there's an $18 tile saw pump from Home Depot for a Ryobi tile saw. And then of course the rest is copper. And this is 8 millimeter OD, 5 millimeter ID, PVC plastic airline. And it's oil resistant, solvent resistant, all of that. And at five millimeters is too small to go over a quarter inch pipe until you get it hot with a heat gun. And then you can get it to go on there. And then it goes back to its original tension. And it works real good because there's no pressure. So I can turn the pump function on and off right here. So if I put this down, the pump doesn't run. If I put this up, the pump runs based on this switch. So the pump will turn off when this thing comes down. And then this is just a removable ground fault interrupter that the pump's plugged into. And it all works great. I've got a little bit of wet paint. I'm going to get some video of it running in a little while after I let it dry a bit. And then I'll add this in. So thanks for watching. I got this little bit of uh, shop maintenance done because it was a big ball of rust when I started because the rain came and got it, my poor little saw. Thanks for watching. Let me get my fat ass up off the floor. Hey guys, Kim here. So this week, in between other stuff, I've got my band saw here and in the desert, it doesn't hardly rain, and when it does, it tends to rain in the middle of a sandstorm with a thunderstorm going on, and it blows the dirt sideways, and it goes everywhere. So I have to clean them all the time, 
but this little saw I've had for about six or seven years, it actually was in a spot where a roof leaked and poured water all over it. It was a big ball of rust. So disappointing. In any case, I took it all apart and I cleaned it and got the rust off and painted it. But then, since I was in the middle of it, I decided to finish what I started a long time ago. You know, I built a chip pan and I was going to mount it under here. I never did. I just have it laying there. And Steve Summers on his channel had a video recently where he put a flood coolant on it. And I was very impressed with that. And decided to do the same thing. So let me zoom it in. So I've run a copper line. You see it coming around like this. I think I'm too close, huh? It goes under the motor right here comes out and it just follows the edge all the way to here to a valve and it goes around here and it hooks it's actually on the guide the sliding guide bracket and there's a slit in the end of it where it just goes around the blade so I'm going to put a pump over here but that's what got me to this part these guys. So what I what I do when I'm fabricating is I use cardstock. It's thicker than paper. If it's small, I use cardstock. If it's bigger than that, I start using cardboard. And I make a little template. And this guy, I don't know if you can see it, it fits right here. And what it'll do is it will catch whatever drains off the back of this this area because the coolant's going to come through here. It's going to collect over in this area and run out, and this will catch it. But when you tilt this guy up like this, it can run all across the back. So I've got this guy to catch any fluid that runs out. Okay, here's the coolant tank. It's basically eight by eight by 12 inches. Eight by eight by 12. This here and this here are what mounts it because this dimension across here is almost exactly the dimension between the rails on the bottom of the saw. So this guy goes up from the bottom, slides over where one of those angle irons hits here and then that angle iron over there swings around and supports the other side. It just barely fits. Now inside, as you can see, the return from the saw goes in here, drops down all the weight. Then the, the coolant has to flow up four inches to the little tiny submersible Ryobi tile saw pump. And then, of course, it goes out to everything else. And then I put these grommets in to protect the, you know, the wire and the, the actual hose. And that's it. So, yeah. This is a 14 gauge or 1 16th thick steel, weld steel from like Lowe's. About to do the electrical on this bandsaw. So let me zoom it in a hair. I'm going to talk about a couple of things I got here. I got a, we call it a, an adjustable deep two square box. It's got a metal black bracket and a screw so you can adjust it a long ways in and out. Got a gray cover. 15 amp outlet. This kind of outlet that you can sever the connection between the two. You have two different things. I've got these three guys, which are strain reliefs where a cable goes through a bulkhead. And 
and I have a little ground fault interrupter that's just independent. Okay, like I said, I want to put this guy in here somewhere, right? Just about like this. Now I have figured this thing has a little stem that sticks in and it sticks in about that far, right about to there. So right about there is about as far as I can go with the edge of this guy and know that I have room for this to articulate in there because it does this. So it goes in a little bit and goes down. So now you can see the inner rectangle goes across here. That is essentially this guy. See, it'll be in the back. All right, so now we're going to take this panel off, get the wiring out of it, take the screw out. Now these two screws go through the casting and hook up with a, or actually screw into a plastic box on the inside that holds all the wiring. So there's no nuts, just these two screws until you get inside. Okay, so what you're seeing here, three wires. Green is the ground, obviously, is connected here. The black wire is the hot wire goes to this side of the switch, and the neutral white wire goes to the other side of the switch, and you can see these two coming out. These are going to the motor. So, unhook the motor first. Now all I got left is this machine screw that goes into the casting and it has a star washer behind it and that will come out so there's the power cord with the switch like I said this other one it goes to the motor so I'm gonna take this screw out Yeah, I'm going to reach up in here and pull this box out. And it's easier if you loosen this screw. It does have a nut inside. And it has this metal clamp that holds on to the wire as it the wire goes along this edge to go to the motor and that's it and there's a star washer found all the pieces everything's apart and now I can work on cutting this hole out the first step on to finding this rectangle they want pretty precise is to drill a hole in each corner, right, and close to the corners you can get, right? Let's see how this goes. So, all you really need is two opposite corners for a saber saw to easily cut it out. Well, 
let's see how much I can get with my trusty Ryobi. Double check that there's nothing in the way. Start this way. So now we're, we're getting this box ready, take this nut off, okay, it goes in that hole just like that, and there's two of them, so it's just basically a hole saw, three quarter inch hole saw. that. So then put this strain relief on there. One will be the power coming in and the other one will be going out to the motor and the interrupt switch. So the interrupt switch will go out to the switch and back into this box and then it'll go back out to the motor through there. Keeps the wires tidy. Okay, like I said, don't trust me to tell you how to do electric. End of disclaimer. This is uh, the part that you see all the time, right? These two are the ones that poke in, this is the ground. If you look on the back, typically, notice these are silver and these are brass colored. That's because the little hole the, the smaller one is the hot lead, and they do not want the neutral lead to end up in the hot lead because that can mess with a device. So typically, I gotta get this a little closer so I can see it. See on the hot side, you got the two outlets supplied by these two screws. This piece right here, you take it out it isolates these two from each other so that it'll isolate those so you can have one's got a separate circuit than the other so I'm gonna take this guy out to do that see if I can do that on camera Usually you get a screwdriver and kind of work it once you get a little bit softer Come on now. Just kind of weaken it a little bit. See, it's getting softer and softer. Now I'll go get my trusty needle nose pliers. Well, this guy to come up again. You got to kind of fatigue the metal a little bit. Come on now, one side. 
There it is. See there? Now these two guys are not connected. So ultimately what I'm gonna have is this will be hot all the time that the thing's plugged in. You could use a like a light or anything like that. This one will only be on when you flick a switch and this is where the coolant pump will be plugged in. Let's see if this thing works. It's all works. Oh. oh yeah. I need a lot. This is an old place here, by the way. Ain't no leak. You saw this nearly fast. Back off some of the tension because I was cutting aluminum before.
You may have noticed that I did not give detailed videos or instructions on how to actually wire this guy up. And the reason I did that is because if you know how to do this type of wiring and you look at what I have shown you, you're going to know immediately how I did it. If you don't know how to wire things like that, you really shouldn't be trying to learn it by watching a video of me farting around with my machine. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you are interested, find somebody that knows what they're doing and get some advice and learn how to do it before you start trying to do that kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks, Steve Summers. Great. Turn it off.